Hello, hello there, my crafty friends. It is Candy here from SweetStamper.com, and I'm so happy to be with you here today for my weekly Teach Me Tuesday. We are in the month of July. We've just finished our big, uh, here in the United States, our 4th of July weekend. Um, we have an extended holiday weekend to celebrate our Independence Day, uh, kind of the birthday of our nation. So uh, for many people, that is a big celebration. Most people have Monday as a federal holiday, so most people had the day off work and were able to enjoy a three-day weekend. Welcome, Jeanette. I'm glad you're here. Um, for me, I've been playing catch up ever since uh, my kiddos went back to England. So uh, I definitely did not take off yesterday, but that's okay. I took off lots of time in June and May, so it's time to uh, get back to uh, regular living for me. Hey, Laura, I'm glad you're here. So if you're not aware, Stampin' Up! is uh, running a big designer series paper special. And we have nine of our designer series paper in the annual catalog that are on 15% off. So um, that is exciting. I'm going to actually be featuring one of those nine designs in every one of my Facebook Lives throughout the month of July. Because I know I love a good sale. I'm thinking you probably do too. And so uh, let's figure out what we're going to do with all this paper that we're going to acquire. I know that as a scrapbooker and as a stamper, I tend to gather a lot of designer series paper. It's probably my top favorite item with which to design. It just makes designing so simple because some artists have already done amazing work with regard to images and color. And so I get to step in with my rank amateur um, artistic abilities, I seriously can't draw a stick figure to save my life, and then I can end up creating something really beautiful, and it oftentimes for me starts with designer series paper. So I tend to acquire a bit, but I do like to use it and use the heck out of it. So I'm going to help you do that with me all month long. I have a lot to share with you today, so I think I'm going to go ahead and bring the camera down. Give me just a moment while I pull up my um, my computer. Make sure I'm seeing the same things that you are seeing. And um, I wanted to share with you some cards I got in the mail and also review last uh, week's um, Facebook Live. Here we go. Okay. Let me make sure I'm seeing what you're seeing and that I'm actually in the camera. There is not a science to this, so I just flip the camera down, which means that, you know, sometimes, oh yeah, not bad. Okay, so I can see where I need to come down here. Okay, that helps me. Because once I turn the camera down, I actually cannot um, see through the camera because it's facing down. <laughs> Okay, so what I wanted to share with you first is um, some lovely cards I got in the mail. So this is the um, designer series paper that just retired, and let me see if that's better. Um, yeah, I think that better. I think the lighting's maybe a little better there. Um, this is actually the hydrangea designer series paper, really lovely. So that was just a beautiful card I got from a friend. This one does not have a designer series paper, but isn't it adorable? Such a cute card. This was in our holiday catalog, I believe, maybe two years ago. Maybe it was last year. But you're so cool. Isn't that a fun card to get? This is from another one of my stamping friends. And look how she's taken that designer series paper. Again, one that just retired uh, in our um, spring catalog. And... Um, She's used the postage stamp punch, which is a cute way to layer up designer series paper and then that little pop of color with a cardstock piece. So, you know, great ideas on that. And then this paper that has, uh, I think this retired from last annual catalog. This was actually one of my customers who took this class and we made this exact card, but with this different paper and different ribbon. And she wanted to thank me for the class and show me what she had done with taking my design and just changing it up a bit, which I love. That's what I endeavor to do is to really empower you with your own paper crafting. And then this one I got from my upline. 
um, Jill Olson. And I love the way, this is kind of like a little Jenga design. And uh, to me, it's like a Jenga game because you take all the little pieces and do fun things with them. And um, I thought it was such a brilliant design. I love it. I'm going to case this. She also used that new, I think it's called Animal Print Embossing Folder. So there's the animal print there and there. And this kind of leads me into what I did on Thursday. And that was my simple and stepped up with this exact paper. So one of the things I talked about on Thursday was that if you have paper, either that you got in Designer Series Paper Share, where I give you some of all the different papers, or because you bought it, it was on sale, but you're like, well, you know what? I don't have any stamps to really go with this. But look at the fun cards that you can make with this paper, even if you don't have the rest of the suite. So I had done this simple card, which is just stamps, ink, and paper on this one. And then I stepped it up here with some ribbon and some embellishments and then added a little punch here. But you can see that's kind of what Jill did here as well is she used that cheetah print and then added some pretty ribbon and you know that little bit of gold I think kind of lifts this because these are all really earthy colors and I like the way that gold really kind of makes everything pop. So that's kind of my review for you and just to share with you some of the cards I've been receiving in the mail. Happy mail is always, always welcome. So I'm happy to see that I've got Jackie and Jess and Vivian. Oh, you're very hot up in Maine. That's got to be a little bit unusual, Viv uh, Vivian. And Melissa is here. So And Darlene is here today. And Jill, okay, welcome, welcome, ladies. So let me show you a couple more things, and then we're going to get on to what we're making today. I did want to show you, well, that's my little paper chart from In the Wild paper really fun paper to use. Uh, I will say this kind of uh, crept up on me in the sense that I, it wasn't one of those that I immediately went, oh, I, lo I love the colors. And actually one of our team members, um, Jana, she's done some gorgeous cards with this. And I may ask her to see if she'll let me share them here because she shared them on our team page. But I think they're amazing, amazing cards with this suite and kind of made me think, hmm, maybe I'm going to get the suite up. Maybe I'm going to get the stamps and the, and the dies after all. So let me show you really quick our, um, my uh, scrapbooking for this month. You know, every month I run a uh, scrapbook creative box and Sweetly Scrapped is a really cool um, community that we're building. And there's four of us demonstrators. So it's me and um, Jen Pitta here in the United States and then two of our Canadian friends and um, so together all four of us what we do is we take a single set of paper and a uh, suite and then we create numerous projects and then we share them all as part of our community so you can get just one box um, it's a $35 fee it includes everything and um, what you get is you get a full pack of this designer series paper and then you get the inspiration from us you also get assorted cardstock, 12 by 12 cardstock pieces. And I wanted to just show you quickly this, the, what I had done with it this month because this is actually the pansy patch paper. But you will not see many pansies here because these are the pages that I needed to create, wanted to create. So we have some single layouts as well as some double spreads and using just various elements. So you get, you know, you get a selection of 12 by 12 cardstock pieces, both colored and white. You get a lot of doodads. So we give you all kinds of die cuts and things that you can just create and have fun with because the idea is that we're gonna inspire you with our pages, but you know the pages that you need. Well, you have different, different photos. And so based on the photos that you have, we're inspiring you to be able to do your own. And these were really funny. You know, Roscoe, our Welsh Corgi, he is just the funniest. Oh, here, this is the way by, this is the way this layout goes, this way. Uh, he's just such a character and he has always gone down. He's a little old now to do this, but in years gone by, we would go down to these, what we call the climbing trees with our grandkids. And oh, that, let me see if I can get rid of that light is really really reflecting badly let me see if I can get that changed 
Um, and he would actually take the kids down to climb these trees, and Roscoe would climb the tree. It's the darndest thing. I've never seen a dog do this. And so I just thought I had a set of these photos with Roscoe up in the tree digging around. And I thought this would be fun to scrapbook. You know, one day Roscoe will no longer be with us, as much as I hate to say that. And um, we've got a number of good years left with him, God willing. But I thought this would be a fun uh, set of pages, and I called it, you know, dog or cat, because he's climbing a tree like a cat. I've never seen a dog do this before, and he's a low rider. He's a Welsh Corgi. So anyway, that is Sweetly Scrapped, and um, these are the pages that I'm sharing this month. So I, I give you just a little sneak peek there um, of what the people who get our kit. Uh, it's a scrapbook box, not a true kit. It's a box, so you get all kinds of pieces, and then you get to do what you want with them, and we do have a Facebook community if you'd like to be a part of that. Let me show you one more thing and then we're gonna stamp, I promise. I'm gonna stamp using this stamp set. This is what I'm featuring in this month's card class. Every month I do an eight card class and I call it um, Cards with a Twist because I take one stamp set and I create eight cards. Now technically there are two each of four designs, but you can see how I've done a little something different with each set. Sometimes my twist is to change up the card base color. Sometimes it's to change up the designer series paper. Sometimes it's just to change up the orientation. So I do lots of different twists. And I think I'm ay, 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 out of the camera again. Um, so different little, um, I did two fancy folds this, with this month. So this is a fancy fold here. And then the first one I showed you is also a fancy fold. And with this card class, um, this one you see, I just, the only thing I changed was the color of the focal piece. So you get everything you need for all eight cards prepped and ready to go. You get your die cuts, you get your punches, everything. You do get eight envelopes. And this month you're also getting have a package of this gorgeous in good taste paper. Now a half a package of this paper is not what you typically get with six with six sheets. This is actually a 24 sheet package. So you're gonna get one of all 12 of these pieces. And then I'm gonna show you some different ways of using them. I actually strategically chose some of the patterns that you might think were a little bit more challenging to, to use. I mean, the wood grains are pretty natural, easy to use. Uh, but some of these tiles and different things are a little bit, might, you know, stretch you a little bit. So I strategically used those. Um, you're also going to get a package of these lovely um, metallic pearls. So you get half, half the package has gold and half of them have silver. What I like about these is they're really trim and tailored. They're not super shiny. They're actually really subtle. And so if you need to, they're just very versatile. They're really good for guy cards as well. So I have several in here that could be used for guys or girls. Uh, you get the eight envelopes, this, and then you get, you can see my roll of ribbon is totally gone, but you're gonna get a full roll of this lovely early espresso faux suede trim. It's like suede. So again, kind of tying in those masculine things along with the feminine. Um, I mean, birdhouses and all things nature, you know, they, were, they appeal to everybody, boys and girls, men and women. You can, if you want to, you can add on the stamp set. You can add on the watercolor pencils. I am gonna show you some fun things to do with these because that is what I use on all of my cards here. And I'm gonna show you a different way to use this stamp set today. So we are going to use blends today because you can do a lot of different things with this stamp set. So this is the paper I'm gonna use this time. Again, I wanted to kind of pull in some nature um, orientation or nature uh, coordination, I guess I should say, because I, these are garden birdhouses. So this is a really fun set of papers. Love, love, love these papers. Um, there's always an A side and a B side. This is one that is, um, this is one that's on sale this month. I think it's called, aye, aye, aye. Um, Something about potted plants. Um, <laughs> it's not really helpful, is it? So there's the A side, but look at that B side. Again, you're getting some of that really pretty wood grain, but this is a finer, uh, a smaller planks on this one. This one is really, really bold with all those leaves, but then look at that brick. 
So I love the A side and the B side. There's some more wood grain. This is the one I'm using today. Love, love, love these leaves. More like, a, almost like a pine bower, just a really fine leaf. And then look at that cinnamon cider brick. Isn't that gorgeous? And then here we have just some really pretty plants and then another really subtle background. So this is the paper I'm using today. Um, somebody will probably help me here with the name of the paper because it's escaping me at the moment. And I am going to do a fancy fold today. I'm gonna to be using Garden Green and this is five and a half by four and a quarter. Let me grab my adhesive kit because I forgot and I'm gonna need some of this and some of this. That should be it. And we are, hey Susan, I'm glad you're here. And Velma, thank you so much for sharing my video. That helps me tremendously. And Valerie's here. Welcome, welcome, ladies. So I have, and I'll give you an inspiration sheet so you don't, if you don't catch the measurement. So this is five and a half by four and a quarter. It's just a quarter sheet of cardstock, and that's going to become the base of my card. This is five and a quarter by four. And I've scored it at four and an eight. Now, originally, I was going to go in this direction because I love, love, love this, this gorgeous deep green. But I flipped it over and went, you know what? I think I'm going to go with this cinnamon cider brick. Really cool pattern. So let's go here. And let's go here. This is going to fold up like so. So you can see how my card is going to open like so. Isn't that fun? And what I need in here, and I think I probably forgot to bring over, yes I did, is a white panel to put on the inside. So I don't know about you, but I tend to just take a whole bunch of white cardstock, that's not the right size, and create panels that are five and a quarter by four. And let me show you what I mean. So oftentimes I will just take like a half a pack of cardstock and I'll just make a stack of these. And then they're handy and ready to, oh, I know this, I see, it's actually right, but I need to cut it down because this is already five and a quarter by four. Okay, get with the program, here we go. This is gonna to need to be trimmed down just a wee bit because I already have a five and a quarter by four layer. So now I need to go down one more. I need to bring it down another quarter inch this way so that it's three and three quarters. And then I need to bring this one down to five. Right there. And then that is gonna fit ever so nicely Bloom where you're planted. See, I knew, Darlene always bails me out. Thank you so much, Darlene. I appreciate that. Bloom where you're planted is the name of this designer series paper. And there's actually a whole suite around it. Again, I'm showing you paper that I do not have the suite. I do not have this suite, but I love the paper. I might get the suite eventually. We'll see. But I wanted to use it with this particular set of stamps. So I'm not going to put that down just yet because I'm going to decide on the, I'm going to decide on the um, stamp I'm going to use after I do this. You know, I've told you guys before, typically I have not made this card before I get to you guys. I have a few things in my head. So that's about as far as I've gotten. Now I'm going to decide which one of these bird houses I'm going to use. Um, this one is really cool, but it's also a little bit large there. I have a small piece to stamp, so I think I'm going to go with this narrower birdhouse. And that's going to look really nice. And then I am going to use the little pole here. And I think I want to put a little birdie in there. So I could just have the bird somewhere, but I think I'm going to actually have a little piece going out like this. So this kind of show, you know, when you're wanting to build a scene, you can kind of put, lay your stamps out and figure out how you want to do it before you actually commit. And then the one other little piece that I did go ahead and die cut because I 
figured I was going to use it. Let's see if I can find it now. I had a little piece for my greeting because I thought, you know what? I think I want to make the greeting separate. Ay, ay, ay. Come on, Candy. Where are you? I have a little stitched rectangle. Ha <laughs> ha. Hiding in my basket. So I'm going to put my greeting like this. So that's, I think that's going to work. I think that's going to work. So let's go ahead and stamp. Like I said, we're going to use some different colors of um, blends for this particular card. So let's bring this here and let's grab, I think that will work there. And this little guy, yeah, he works on a D block. We'll come back to this one. Now, when you're stamping this particular um, stamp set, you want to start with your birdhouse first, and then you can build around that going down. So let's get the Tuxedo Black ink. And this is going to work out perfectly because this will allow me enough time for my ink to dry. You know, I'm a bit of a stickler about this, but your Tuxedo Black ink does need to dry. And if you start trying to either, um, well, add color in any direction, whether you wanna add color with your uh, watercolor pencils or you wanna add color with your blends, you know, what happens is if you start doing that before this black ink has dried, you end up with a lot of smudging and unsightly mess. And that's not what we're looking for. So it doesn't take long for this ink to dry, but sometimes depending on like, right now it's super humid in San Antonio. And so it can take a little bit longer than you're thinking. And you're like, okay, I've stamped, I'm ready to move on. No, actually just give it a couple of seconds or maybe even a minute. Hey Barb, I'm glad you've joined us. So I'm actually going to go ahead and put my stamps away. Of course, this would be really good habit to get into anyway. And then I wouldn't ever have to worry about whether my stamps are dry or not. So this, I'm preaching to myself here. If I just put the stamps away, then all that will be dry. Now I am gonna take this little guy here. I think this is actually meant to be like a perch. Well, no, it's not actually meant to be a perch. I think it's actually meant to be um, something that hangs down, but I think it makes a great perch. So that is going to go there. And tell me whether I should do hello or birthday wishes because they both fit into my greeting. And I wanna have a little birdie that is facing the birdhouse. He's heading into the birdhouse. So I'm going to ink him up and I'm going to put him right there on that little perch. Isn't that cute? Super cute. But see, for somebody who can't draw, look at that gorgeous artwork. And that just took me mere seconds. So, uh, okay, everybody's wanting hello. So hello, it will be. And this is ready to go. Let's put a hello here, and that is the hello. Look at this cool font. This is really awesome. Look at that. It looks like somebody with really good penmanship <laughs> wrote that. So I like that, and it's a little bit bold as well, so that's kind of shaping up nicely there. And then last but not least, remember I wanted to put something on the inside. So I think I'm going to put some of these little flowers in there. Let's do that, and then, let's see, then we're ready to do a little bit of coloring and really maxing our fun fold because it really is a fun fold. Great way to use up a lot of your designer series paper, and I say use up because, you know, when we buy this paper, it's meant to be used and it's not meant to sit in the back of our crafting cabinet. It's actually meant to be used. And to really, um... oh, now Darlene said happy birthday on the inside. Oh, that's kind of a cute idea. I like that. Okay, so let's just do it. 
we'll utilize them both. Hello, and then birthday wishes. I like it. I would not have thought of that. Well done, darling. Okay, here's my birthday wishes. And again, we have this awesome, awesome mixed font. Well, the first, the first greeting, the hello, didn't have a mixed font. It just had the one. Now, because I have two words, we have two different fonts. Isn't that nifty? And see how bold the letters are on this? You know, sometimes our fonts have really kind of delicate, thin lines. This is pretty bold, and, and I like the bold. So now I do, I will say, I'm a messy girl, but I do always check to make sure all my stamps are there before I close this up. Because especially these little photopolymer guys, man, they'll stick to something and you'll, you'll be hunting all over kingdom come for them. Okay, so the stamping part is done. Now I am ready to start adding color. I'm going to start here because this is, this is going to be my focal point. And maybe I just need to do this. Because although when I use my, um, when I use my uh, blends, they do bleed through, but they're only going to bleed through to this piece of garden green cardstock. So not a problem. Now, look at all the, look at all the blends I pulled. <laughs> I pulled a few. I do think that what I'm going to do is grab a plain. There's a little scrap of basic white. And what I want to do is I want to add some color. I think I'm going to make my birdhouse the same color as the brick. Look at that darker. See how that darker um, cinnamon cider would look really nice there? Um, and I think in actuality... Um, a bronze pen too. This is one of those colors. Oh, that's perfect. What I want to do is I want to actually make a little bit of a darker piece here. And look how nicely that's coming out. Let me move this out of the way. It's kind of a, this bronze you can actually use in a whole host of ways. It's really good for skin tones. And I am using the fine tip and look how quick that goes. I mean, lickety split. Boom, we're done. Now I think I'm gonna also go up here and maybe even do these little tiles. Kind of the shingles, got a little shingle roof on this birdhouse going. You can see how this would actually make a great card for a guy or for a girl. I know personally, I am a big time bird lover. We have uh, bird feeders outside our breakfast room, and we actually refill them rather a lot because we are very popular in the neighborhood with the bird feeder. And um, it is just a lot of a lot of fun when um, when our kids were here. Our kid our kids have known about our bird feeders for years, but it was fun to see the grandkids really enjoying them. And funnily enough, Griffin is two and a half. And because we had kept saying, oh, Griff, look at the woodpecker. He saw that big woodpecker, and he was sitting at the table uh, eating like a couple days later, and he said, woodpecker. And I'm like, wow, that's a, that's a lot of, that's a big word for a two-and-a-half-year-old and a pretty good um, eye for what he saw. So you could do this opposite. How do you store your pens? Okay. I actually use one of the Stampin' Up! ones, Mary. Stampin' Up! has the little, um, they're just, they're very lightweight, but they're sturdy, they're plastic uh, containers, and well, they sit um, on whatever space you wanna sit them on, and um, I will do a quick show you. Um, maybe not today, because that place is a real wreck right now. Um, you know, just keeping it real. But you do, you are meant to store these on their sides. You don't want to store them up and down because all of the ink will flow to one end or the other. That's a great question. Okay, let's just look at this little birdie. I'm thinking that we might want to add a little pop of color with our bird. And what about Poppy Parade? We could do that, or we could, 
Oh, let's see. The, oh, this is our pale papaya. This is definitely not nearly as, no, that's not, that's not really a pop of color. I meant to grab the Calypso Coral. Let's see how that would look. I could use, um, in this paper, they have Cajun Craze, but I think it's going to make it too dark. I didn't want anything quite that dark. Uh, see, that's going to be a little bit dark. I think we're going to go with this, this Poppy Parade. Now, let's see, I think that's the dark Poppy Parade. This is the light Poppy Parade. Yeah, I think we need the dark one. So let's add a little pop of color there and color our little bird. And I think actually I'm gonna color the top of him in Poppy Parade. And then we'll put the underside in the light cinnamon cider. Let's see. Let's see how that works. And then, oh, I'm liking it. Look at there. What do we think? That little pop of color. Is that nice? See how quick and easy that is? And then I want to put this on the inside. So I do, I'm just going to use the same colors I've used here with the addition of a little bit of just jade. And this is the dark version. And what I like to do when you have these dark stems like this is just to go over them with your Stampin' Blend. And then you get that, you get the green instead of, you know, you don't really want black grass. And, but there's no place really to um, fill in a grass blade. So that's my way to do it, just to give it a light touch with that. And then I'm going to come back in with the dark Poppy Parade. This is the one I had put on my bird, and I like to have, you know, there to be a little bit of consistency coming in here so that it all kind of looks like it's meant to be together. So that is now ready to go on the inside. Let's just come together oh, so nicely. I like it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually attach this first. Now, when you're doing this fold, you want to think about the way I want to open I want to open it from the left to the right. That's typically the way we, you know, we do a book here in the United States with our English language. I know there are some languages where you go right to left. Boy, that messes with my brain. So <laughs> let's see. This is going to go right on top there. And then, you know what? I think I meant to do something different. No. Nope. We're just going to do that. And then we are going to put this on the inside because we're going to do a little ribbon closure here. And that's going to be our last little element for our fun fold card that, card that really celebrates nature. You know, the great thing about birds is that they are in our landscape throughout the year. And so you can really, this is kind of an any time of year card, but look how when you open the card, you have all that pretty green. When you close the card, you have those cinnamon cider uh, bricks, and it's just lovely. Great paper. This is again the, um, what was it called again? Let me see what, um, it was the something about plants. Where did it go? Darling, uh, bloom where you're planted. Bloom Where You're Planted is the Designer Series paper. This I'm going to just leave flat and I'm going to pop up the um, greeting. The greeting I used, the stitched rectangles. If you do not have them in your collection of crafty supplies, you are going to want to get these. Let me just show you really quick before I attach that. This is the stitched rectangles, and look at how many you get. Um, you even get like this little, this is the one I used here, this kind of a little fat rectangle, uh, but you get all of these, and they have that lovely stitching. Again, they work great for masculine or feminine cards. They just add that little bit of texture. See how that little bit of textural detail comes about when you lay that down? Now, what I need is a couple of dimensionals. 
oh, Darlene, you're loving my card, and you're not a big bird fan, so I'm taking that as a huge compliment. Um, super fun to make, and Darlene did give our Stampin' Blends storage, the item number right there, so Mary, if you or anybody else is looking for that, it's right there. Now, you know what? I was going to do a ribbon closure. I'm not sure I need it. I was going to close the whole thing with ribbon, which I meant to do before I stuck it down. Do we like this ribbon? Or do we like this ribbon? That's a little bit too delicate. This actually, this, let me see if I can pull this up. <laughs> Look at there. This is a nice thing, is when your seal has not yet dried completely, you can actually pull that up. It's really nice and soft still, but I'm not gonna pull it any farther than that because I don't really want to um, go beyond that. I'm gonna pop that right down and then, ah, that's not gonna work. Oh, here we go. Okay, this is what happens when Candy starts popping everything down when, before she's ready. This is going to lift even quicker because I added it last. So let's see if we can do this cute little ribbon closure. And I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a very loose knot because I don't want it to be too hard for somebody to open. And because of that, I probably need to pop this up on dimensionals. Yeah, I think that needs to go up because otherwise it's going to be lumpy over that. This is a really thick ribbon. It's the, it's the er, not early espresso, it's the evening evergreen um, ribbon. I think it's called textured ribbon, if I recall. And it is very, uh, it's a herringbone. It's much thicker. Um, than some of our other ribbons. So you do have to be mindful. I think that it works best in a simple knot or as laying it down as a, uh, as a, as a design element and not as a bow. So there, I do like, you know, when you mix our greens, we have a lot of greens and the greens right now are heavily, um, heavily used in our designer series paper. Um, grab some scissors and then let's see whether we are going to add a little bit of bling and if so what kind of bling are we going to add I do like you see how that darker green really kind of sets off the the garden green so this is the evening evergreen and then to open up the card you've got to undo that little knot um, Let's us see. This is what I was going to originally use is these. Is that too delicate? Because they are kind of small, but they do have just a nice little bit of shine to them. They have an iridescent quality. Oh, I think that's actually quite nice. Because, you know, one of the things I also like to really be mindful of is uh, what's called scale in the world of art. And um, that just means that you don't want, you want to have a balance between large images and small images and, uh, or design, I've got one somewhere, where'd it go? Oh, there we go. You, if you have everything, everything large and then you put a small embellishment on there, it, it's like it doesn't fit. So using everything, you see how small my little bird is and how small the birdhouse is? Um, and really kind of how small my focal point is. So let's, what do we think? Those little iridescent guys, I think I like them. These are those new in color ones. And so I've picked up, this is the um, Evening Evergreen. And so it's picking up that darker green, but they're also iridescent. And so they're actually in the light. They actually kind of pick up a little bit of this cinnamon cider color. And I am actually really, really happy with this. So I appreciate everyone weighing in and helping me with what we decided to do. And again, this is a really cool, um, fun fold card. So let me just untie this 
and show you that somebody is going to open this up and it's going to look like this. But wait, there's more. You could put some extra things here, but honestly, I think it's beautiful when you open it and you have all that greenery. You almost feel like you're outside in someone's garden. So that is it for today, our quick and easy fun fold. Really using that designer series paper, I will put together a little, um, um, what do you call it, uh, an inspiration sheet for you. And the inspiration sheet is different from a tutorial. Inspiration sheet just gives you the measurements and the supplies. A tutorial gives you actual directions. But you don't need the directions because you just saw me do it. And you can just hit replay. But I think it's super quick and easy and actually gives you another great design to go with my card class for this month. So be sure to sign up for my Garden Bird Houses Cards with a Twist. So many fun things to do with these birds and bird houses and all the different grassy images and great branch. Um, so this one I used Stampin' Blends and this one I used, these, these I used the um, watercolor pencils. The great thing about these is you get 13 colors and um, they store nicely, neatly. They'll actually last you for years and they teach you in the class how to blend your colors and get some different shades of greens and oranges and reds and things like that because you can blend your colors out and do some really fun things with them. So that is it for today. I will be back here with you on Thursday for Simple and Stepped Up. Again, I'm going to be showcasing our designer series papers that are on sale all month long. So all my Facebook Lives throughout July and I come on here every Tuesday and every Thursday at two o'clock we're going to be featuring the sale designer series papers. Um, thank you so much for being here with me today. I appreciate it when you uh, share my, uh, my video. It helps, um, has to do with Facebook and um, algorithms. I'm not a math girl, so I don't know what. Algorithms to me, I remember the brainiacs in high school who had slide rules. I'm dating myself here. Um, slide rules and protractors and talked about algorithms have no clue what that is but it has to do something with facebook and social media so if you can share my uh, video i appreciate it so much again uh, i will be here thursday for simple and stepped up stamping with designer series paper thanks so much take care and god bless